Hey, you have found Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue, and I've got a great video for you. We're doing a charcoal shootout. It's lump charcoal. We got Royal Oak versus B and B. So let's get right to it, and we'll see how we did it. Okay guys, I'm gonna give you the parameters of this experiment. So like I said, we're gonna be using B&B &B versus Royal Oak, but it's also, uh, I'm gonna use B&B &B Oak and I'm gonna throw in some B&B &B Mesquite. And then of course, they're both gonna be going against Royal Oak and it's all lump charcoal. And just some uh, information you might, may like to know, they're both American companies. The only difference that I can find is B&B &B apparently manufactures in Mexico. That's what it says on the back in very small print. Royal Oak is manufactured in the USA. That's what it says on the bag in large print. And so we're gonna use three pounds of each one and we're gonna try to bring it up to 500 degrees and see how long we can maintain it there. But the actual experiment will be running from the time it gets to 200 degrees to the time it comes back down to 200 degrees. So 200 to 200 and along the way we'll capture and see how long it was at 300 to 300, 400 to 400 and 500 to 500. So we're going to capture all that information along the way and we're going to do this experiment in a char griller acorn Kamado and the acorn basic principle just like uh, the other Kamado grills they're highly efficient and they don't waste a whole lot of energy so it takes a long time to burn three pounds of charcoal in a Kamado but I chose it because it is efficient and you're not wasting a lot of stuff and therefore you're able to capture the data. Three pounds gives us enough room that if there's a difference between one of these products, well then we have some chance of catching the information and magnifying the differences. So that's why I went with three pounds. And also I thought I could get through three pounds of burn in one day's time. There's three different products, so that's three days that it's gonna take in my estimation to get through it. So I didn't wanna go bigger than that. I, I chose 500 degrees so like I said so I could get through it in a decent amount of time. Trying to see how much BTU power there is in there. I'm not at measuring actual BTUs but we're giving us a point of reference or uh, see how they compare to each other. I guess that would phrase it better. In the Kamado I'm going to be using my smoking stone which is a ceramic stone. It's triangular shape. It just goes in place so you've got some indirect heat. The temperature probe is going to go on top of the smoking stone and so it will be in indirect heat. I chose not to use my grate because at 500 degrees you'll have a tendency to burn your seasoning off and I didn't want to mess with that and it wasn't going to enhance the uh, experiment so we're not using that and another thing on the charcoal is no large pieces. And this is subjective, but I felt that, it, you know, when I reach in the bag, if I'm feeling a baseball, something in that neighborhood, it's not going in the piles. I just want to keep it fair and uh, also lets us get measured more accurately to three pounds. When the temperature drops abruptly, if it starts drawing a line straight down the chart, or once it drops gradually down below 200 degrees, well then I'm gonna open it up and I'm, whatever's on the burn grate, we'll restack it and try to get the temperature back up and see if it's got anything left. When the uh, experiment's over, when it's cooled down and everything's through burning, I'm gonna drop the ash pan and dump that into my bucket and I'm gonna weigh it. And I'm gonna weigh the, take whatever's left on the burn grate and add that to it. So we'll be weighing the ashes and the unburned to see if that's anything of significance. So starting the fire, we're gonna be using the Royal Oak Starter Square. They're compressed cardboard basically, but they're readily available, they're cheap, and they lend themselves well to this experiment. You know, as a whole, as far as a starting product, I don't really love them, but they do work. That's what I had at the dollar store and I was able to get my hands on for the experiment. So that's what we went with Royal Oak starter squares. And I do fire those off with my torch. And the theory here is I want to light as small a fire as I can and get away with it and have the thing light the charcoal off and, and 
doesn't go out and I can capture the data and ramp it up to temperature. So that's what I'm trying to do. Start as small as possible and then bring it up to temperature so I can capture all the data along the way and see which one has the most to give. The Fireboard 2 Pro is what we're going to be used to controlling the temperature. It is a computerized thermometer. It is hooked to a fan. The fan's mounted at the bottom of the uh, acorn. The Fireboard tells the fan what to do and that controls the temperature. So when it blows harder, well, you, you're going to get more heat going through there. So Fireboard controls it. It does a good job. And it has a great app which captures everything in the form of a graph. So we'll have uh, the graphs to look at and they're interactive. So you can go back and you can find out at this point in the graph what time was it and what was the temperature. These graphs, I'm going to leave links for them down below and you can pull them up and look at the exact same graph that I did. When I added up the times, I don't, I'm not counting down to the exact minute. So uh, the times that I use for my final analysis, I round it up or down to the nearest 15 minutes. So it's not going to be to the exact minute. It's not exactly scientific but it's a good point of reference. I'm going to also, at the end, put up a chart, and the chart will show us everything at the same time. So you can take a look and you can see all the data and take a quick comparison and see what they did and form your own opinion about what you thought did the best. I'll give you my opinion, but uh, numbers don't lie, so we'll see what they tell us. Okay, I do a quick disclaimer right here that I'm not associated with either one of these charcoal companies or any charcoal company as that goes. And uh, the data is presented to you exactly as I found it. And this is the B&B Mesquite Lump. And we'll look at the chart right quick. Okay, it came up to 500 degrees. And then here where the blue dot is, fell off the cliff for some reason. And I went in and restacked it. And it recovered and then a little bit came back up and then went down in a slow decline below 200 and finished the burn. And then we're going to BNB Oak. And you can see this one came up above 500. It stayed there for about three hours and then it made a slow decline, got below 200. I did a restack and then it came up back to 200 degrees and got some additional credit right there. And we do the Royal Oak and we got an anomaly at the beginning right here it made a little panhandle because evidently when I closed the lid the probe slipped over to the edge and got some direct heat that's why that's sticking up there I opened it up got it back on the smoking stone and then it stayed at 500 for a nice long time and it made a slow decline down below 200 and in that little valley I didn't put a note but I did the restack right there and it so briefly came back up to 200 degrees and finished the burn okay now I've got a chart up here. It's got everything we can look at at one time. And going across the board in the 200 degree temperature range, it looks like B&B Oak took that. 300 degrees, Royal Oak. 400 degrees, Royal Oak. 500 degrees, Royal Oak. The ashes and unburned. That was a tie straight across the board. That didn't seem to be a big deal. Okay, today it looks like uh, according to this data, Royal Oak came out a little bit ahead. B&B Oak came out a little bit behind. If we did the experiment 10 times would you come out exactly the same well we don't know you have to do it 10 times to find out i'm not doing that today so this is what we have to go with i uh, hope it's some useful data for you hope it's something you can use and i hope you consider hitting that like button and then please consider smashing that red subscribe button down at the bottom i appreciate you watching hope to see you next time at paul daddy's blind hog barbecue <laughs>